school. Medical school, huh? Quite tough, isn't it? Oh, but it's okay. I'm here to help and hopefully, as a person who has gone through pre-clinicals and passed all the exams, I'll give you some tips which helped me and I wish I knew before entering pre-clinicals and medical school. Alright, so before anything, my name is Wan Muhammad Fasti and I am a third year medical student from IME University. So for today, I'll be giving you 10 tips which helped me survive my pre-clinical life here. So if in a rush, here I put the timestamps below here and go to which tips you feel that is more supportive of you. But if you're here for the whole ride, then you can tune in and we can go straight to the first tip of the day. Planning is everything. Like for me, what I always do is like either the weekend before or like four or five days before. I mean, four or five days is too much. Relax. Just two days before, the weekend before, what I always do, my university provides me with the material beforehand. So I'm able to go through all the stuff before. So what I do is that for the module or whether this mess itself, I just go through whatever I'm going to learn. I'm not going through all the lectures, no, I'm not doing that, I'll never do that. So what I do is just, I scan through all the topics and just get an idea of what I'm gonna do. So whenever I go into the first day, even though I don't know really much about the content itself, but just getting a broad idea of what you're gonna learn will actually help you a lot. Whenever you're going to start a new semester, you'll be all over the place and you'll just be panicking all around. But just relax, just get an idea of what you're going to learn. The best tip here is just ask your seniors to be honest what to prepare for that semester. And the second tip is to check the learning outcomes. Within a lecture, it's quite a handful for you to remember everything about it. So you get kind of confused of what you have to really understand. Just look at the learning outcomes and if you can understand it and better if you can answer it or oh, way better if you can teach it. That's enough because I mean, with medicine, there's a lot of materials, right? Within that particular topic, it can go very detailed and sometimes way beyond our syllabus itself. So just to keep you in a safe box, just go to your learning outcomes so you know how much should you know for this particular topic. So use the learning outcomes as a guideline and help you navigate through your preclinicals. I'm moving on with number three, find your study style. For me, I started in college with writing. A lot of hundreds of notes and day by day my notes would just pile up. So when I started university, I took a big step and changed my studying style to do notes online with Notion. It was a big leap to be honest. I mean you're changing your study style, right? Getting out of your comfort zone. But I feel that university is the perfect time, especially if in your first semester, it's the most perfect time for you to find your study style. Either you do handwritten notes or you do online or you better with flashcards like Anki or you do better with drawings. There's a lot of other techniques. For me, in the end, I use Pomodoro technique. I would go all out for like 30 minutes or one hour depending on how much I need to concentrate. Then I take a break for like 10 minutes, 20 minutes and go back to studying again. So that's how I find my study style. And now I use flashcard with Anki and then I use my notion. Studying is one thing, but to find a way to study is another thing. Like study how to study. Like, or people always say, study smart, not hard. I'm moving on with number four is time management. And I know you always hear about this all the time, but it is the most important factor, especially when you're near your exams. So for me, how I study is that I plan it based on how many time I have left. Let's say I have two weeks before my exams, and let's say I have around like 40 topics. I mean, that's normal for medical school, that amount of topics. Two weeks, 14, 40 topics. So let's divide that. So it's 2.35, meaning around like two or three lectures per day. That's how we do it. So we do three or two lectures per day and some lectures might be a handful. So you might have to get just one topic per day and some lectures might be very short. So you can do like four or five a day. And of course you can take your break days also. Some days I might go out of my way to complete more topics so I can just rest days, have some rest days and all. You won't get jumbled up and panic when you're nearing your exams. And also for me, I would always give one week free for my exams. I mean, depends on if it's a small exam, I wouldn't. But if it's like a big final exam, I would just give one week for me just to go through it all over again. So always give one week gap. So tip number five is, are you the type to study by yourself or study with a group? I mean, it can change around. In the beginning, I studied with a group. However, I realized that I would always have to be on the same pace with my friend. 
like we have our own schedules and all i was more involved in like sports and all and he had more free time and so in the end he just like went all ahead and i was still here so i had to like run as fast as i could i can to catch up to his level there was unnecessary pressure to be honest so with studying with a group is that you have to follow everyone's pace and all and you have to adapt with how they study and all but the good side is that you get to cover more topics in a faster time because usually you share notes within your study group and all and you master one topic and then you teach this topic to the other group members and then that group member will teach you this topic and all so you guys will have the same understanding and you might have more understanding on that particular topic however as exams go by i started to study alone thankfully it worked out for me in the end because i was able to study in my own pace do my own notes at any pace and like wake up i want to study study when i want to sleep i sleep just like have my own schedule at all but then with that you need to have self discipline because no one around you is gonna ask you to study like how a study group does when you study with a group when you see your friends studying you would want to study also but when you're studying alone it's all about you so sometimes without motivation you just need to carry on i'm moving on with number six is to study consistently i beg you rather than cramming everything at the end just help yourself out and study consistently since the start because i like to study in like small small bits rather than like everything at once especially with medical school you're handling a lot of topic at once yes you can cram but a lot of caffeine a lot of sleepless night and then you'll get there i prefer to avoid that throughout my 2.5 years of pre fails thankfully have not have a sleepless night due to studying due to other stuff like playing sports or like hanging out at all that's a lot but due to studying you know whenever you like activate your brain all the time a small chunk of time here a small chunk of time there then your brain will always remember that stuff like for me i used anki for that if you study consistently from the start it will help you in the future and you won't have to cram everything at the end and number seven is use your sources what i mean by sources is lecturers friends and seniors what i'm saying is that lecturers around so ask them questions ask them to guide you on a particular topic so just go to them and like some lectures also say that okay this particular topic is high yield so really put more effort not meaning that don't single out all the other topics and all but put more effort into that particular topic so use your lectures and don't also use seniors like i said earlier in the video like ask them before a semester starts like ask them how to go through this topic like what do we expect how to prepare beforehand and also like if it's near exam maybe ask them how they study and how they tackle this topic and all and number eight is use your online sources going to a lecture on your campus does not mean it's a full stop to your study for me personally it wasn't enough maybe i could get a basic understanding but to really go into detail of that topic i would go to mostly youtube for books usually i just use online pdfs because it's more easy to navigate through but i use more youtube because i'm more to viewing with my eyes and i need constant stimulation like how all gen z nowadays because of this thing here so make use of it because lectures i mean it's only one hour of that particular topic no way can it like explain a to z about that particular topic and you just pray for that to get you through your exams no so go through youtube there's a lot of features available there from nature to osmosis it's all free and all so make use of that and Number nine, prioritize understanding rather than memorizing. Yes, memorizing can get you through an exam, but on my experience, it got me through, but however, it made me struggle as I went through preclinicals. And me right now heading to clinicals has really affected me more. Because why? Because I memorized that topic rather than understood it. So with exams, okay, when you memorize it, okay, when you see this particular thing, it triggers in your brain, okay, this links with this, 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 and all but when you understand it when you know from a to z about this particular topic there is no matter how any way they twist or turn this topic around then you're still able to answer the question and when you understand it you're able to concrete more into your brain if you understand it you can get hold of it for a long time and when you try to learn it again it will be more easier last but not least is give yourself some rest days get some days off i know medical school is very tired 
considering it can be and it will be he will always think of studying 24 7 but sometimes your brain just needs some rest there'll be a certain time where your brain is just like nothing's going and uh, you just reach a particular point where nothing is going to your brain just try go to sleep i'll assure that when you get back up you will remember what you studied and you'll be having more energy to study again i mean it depends also if you just study for like 10 minutes and then you went to sleep for five hours okay that's a different meaning i'm saying in a situation where you study for like five hours or anything and you took a nap or you took a good sleep and then probably when you wake up you'll actually understand the topic more because sometimes you just can't force yourself i mean we all have limits we're all just human in the end sometimes we just need a power of button to re-energize our day go exercise hang out make friends still a university student in the end we're still young people who needs to have fun so go and get yourself some fun but put some limitations to it and then you're good to and so that is it for the 10 tips that helped me survive through my preclinicals here how i studied for my medical school exams hopefully you got something and maybe if not all 10 tips maybe you can use either just one or two anything that will help for you and hopefully you'll pass through whatever exam you're going through if you're looking at this video it's already a good start in your medical school life because you're doing something that is getting you on the track so i wish you all the best and good luck and just have fun in medical school and don't stress much about your exams grades are just grades in the end we will still become doctors and grades will just be something in the past like comment and subscribe and hopefully i'll see you in other videos bye bye for now this was fuzzy dunker and ta-da bye bye <laughs> see you